Hello, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to the final one of our water and chemical additive tutorials. In this particular session, we're going to talk about sizing chemicals. So let's just start off with the purpose of sizing. Sizing is a very strange word to uh, most people out there in the real world. Sizing means measuring the length and width and maybe the height and volume of things. Sizing for paper makers means making a sheet water repellent or at least preventing the penetration of water into the surface of the sheet. A quick sort of brief history of sizing. It started off with the Chinese who experienced what we call feathering when they were writing on their papers and they tried to uh, introduce sizing by painting the surface of the sheet with rice water. It wasn't really very successful. The Europeans later developed a method based on gelatin or animal gelatin. Gelatin of course if you like to eat uh, jellies as a, as a food, gelatin is pretty soft so that was a bit of a problem to paper makers and so the came, Illig came up with the idea of gelatin alum system, the alum hardened the gelatin. That was soon taken over by rosin alum systems and that was the dominant sizing system for many many years but it had its problems as we'll talk about in a moment. Um, rosin was eventually replaced by AKD, a material invented by Hercules company and then finally uh, an, another development following the problems of AKD, ASA. So AKD is alkyl ketene dimer, ASA alkyl succinic anhydride and it's these three that I intend to talk about in this particular session. So, okay, let's start with the rosin alum sizing. So, this is uh, what rosin looks like. It's a very hard, amber coloured, semi translucent material. There are three types of rosin there's gum rosin, there's wood rosin, and there's tallile. And it all depends really about where you get it from and how you extract it. And there are three typical methods of extraction. Tapping trees, just like they used to tap trees for rubber, you, particularly pine trees, you put a hole in it, put a little spout in it, wire a cup beneath it, and collect all the rosin that drip, all the resin that drips out of it. The second way is once you've been felling an area of trees, you're left with a substantial amount of tree stump. They can be um, recovered in some way. They can be chipped and then solvent extracted to remove the uh, the resin that's in those chips. But well, obviously not a lot of that. And then finally, if you think about the craft pulping process, where you are dissolving the lignin and many of the extractives included in those extractives are the uh, resinous materials. So once you've got the black liquor you can actually solvent extract the resin, the rosin, before you go on to concentrate the black liquor and burn it like fuel oil. And there are two types of rosin size that could be made. The old-fashioned one, the one that was done first, was the rosin soaps or the soap sizes and essentially rosins are all uh, organic acids so by heating up the organic acids which are completely insoluble by heating them up with caustic soda you get a chemical reaction between an acid and an alkali and you form sodium rosinates which are soluble and can be then added to the paper machine the modern way of dealing with rosins is to make rosin dispersions. So you heat up the rosin until it becomes a liquid 
and then you emulsify it in water and then you add a stabiliser to it, might be cationic starch, um, to keep those particles thoroughly dispersed and they call them protective particles and as you can see there they're typically about 450 to 750 nanometers diameter. So the idea of rosin alum sizing is you put rosin into the system, it disperses itself throughout the whole system and through the fibres and then you lower the pH. As you lower the pH the, uh, the rosin that was in solution then reverts back to its acid rosin state which of course is hydrophobic so it then comes out of solution and it precipitates on the surface of the fibres. And the three materials that we use to do that uh, are all aluminium based products. Papermakers alum, aluminium sulphate, polyaluminium chloride, also known as PAC, and sometimes sodium aluminate. Now, the chemistry of all these is incredibly complex. If we were to look at this in depth, we'd really be talking about a, a level four course. So I'm going to keep this relatively simple just to the uh, level two standard. So this is the mechanism here uh, this represents the surface or part of the surface of a fibre these are some of the OH groups that stick up from the surface of the fibre if another fibre comes down you get the hydrogen bonding fibre fibre bonding. Here this represents the uh, rosin particulate. Remember, they're all acids, so there's the carboxyl group, and it's already interacted with the aluminium. Let's replace the hydrogen. So we've got here an aluminium rosinate, another aluminium rosinate, a third and a fourth. Now, these are all dispersed in solution. We Take the sheet along the wire, off at the cooch, through the press section where all the water has been squeezed away until eventually we're just left with a small amount of water, uh, maybe 50% water, 50% fibre, about to go into the dry section. And of course, what's happened to these is they've come and they've adsorbed onto the surface of the fibre. But if you look, they're in all sorts of orientations. There's nothing special about those orientations. They're everywhere. The next bit is the interesting bit. As the sheet goes through the drier section, these molecules get the energy from the heat and they're able to reorient themselves. So they form these bonds with the hydroxyl groups. And I'll just put a few more in just to uh, help you to see what's going on. <clears throat> so we see now that the polar bit of the molecule has aligned itself with the polar bits on the fibre. The water repellent hydrophobic rosin elements are now all forced up, pushing up. So if you look, what you've got here is this layer of hydrophobic material. So this is the sizing effect. Because all these are now pushing up or, for, or facing up away from the fibre, the water cannot get through them and so sizing has developed. And this happens as the sheet goes through the drying section. So when a rosin alum sheet comes off the end of a reel, off the end of a paper machine onto the reel, it's fully sized. There's no further action goes on. And as we said in the history section, the reason why that system died and this system took over was because the low pH of the aluminium sulphate slowly 
gobbled away, ate away, damaged the cellulosic fibres. So they didn't last for many tens of years. People wanted paper that would last for more than a hundred years, so it couldn't be acid. They also wanted to start using chalk as a filler in the paper. At the moment, they were only they were only using clay. You can't put chalk there, which is a carbonate, when you've got an acid environment, because the acidity of the alum would attack the calcium carbonate. You would get carbon dioxide gas. You would get frothy paper. It would be terrible. So the driving force, as we will see here, the driving force was they wanted to use chalk and they wanted to paper to last longer. So the company who invented that was a company called Hercules. Uh, every now and then they seem to have changed the name. They're still around, but they have a, a different name now. And they produced this material here, which we call AKD alkyl ketene dimer essentially it's an organic molecule this r actually re represents a group a car of carbon chains usually six seven eight carbon chain eight carbons in length there eight carbons in length here so often made with something like things, with things like octanoic acid so what happens is we put the akd in the system again there's no particular affinity at the time for the cellulose it goes through the normal process it dewaters on the wire it dewaters in the press the water that's associated with the sheet contains AKD we dry it you've still no sizing effect and then over the next three weeks a very slow chemical reaction occurs and if you watch these bonds now then you'll see that bond form that bond disappeared it'll change again and it changes again and then finally there and this is now complete so this molecule is now covalently bonded to the cellulose fibre. These are big R groups, just like that round thing I showed you for the rosin. Same idea. They're all oriented upwards away from the fibre and so they have this same effect of creating a hydrophobic barrier. So what you see there is that the AKD molecule reacts with the OH groups on the cellulose. Of course, we're in a paper making system, and that means we have lots of water. And water is HOH. So there's a chance that this material not only will react with the OHs in the fiber, it will react with the OHs in the water. And at about maybe 45 degrees C, after about 15 minutes, anything here that has not already reacted with cellulose will have reacted with the OH group in the water. And the higher the temperature, the faster these things will react. So you've got to be careful. Why? Because this is the molecule. If it reacts with the OH of the water, we get this material. And these, this is a very waxy material. So you've got lots and lots of very, very tiny waxy particles there on the surface of the sheet. And that will make the sheet very slippy. And for some people, uh, the slippiness is not acceptable. If you have a, a pallet full of sheets of paper and they are, oh boy, and they are sized with akd sizing they can be very slippy and a small knock or a breeze can make the whole stack just slide over and fall off and go all over the floor so it produces a very slippy surface for some things it's good for some things it's it's not so good and this is why people were driven 
to look for another material. And that's why they came up with the idea of ASA. ASA stands for alkenyl succinic anhydride. Again, ASA is a big molecule with a, with a couple of big R groups like we've seen in the other systems. And here's a, a lovely diagram produced by the brilliant Martin Hubber of uh, NCSU in the States. And this is the ASA molecule. It, to the uninitiated, it might look very different from the AKD molecule, but honestly, it's not all that different, really. You've got the two R groups, you've got these carboxyl type groups. Now, it reacts with cellulose to form the same sort of bond that AKD forms. But when it reacts with water, it makes this ASA hydrosolate. And this material isn't uh, waxy and, and, and very uh, slippery. It's actually sort of sticky and horrible. But you, so you could take this out of the system. So one of the advantages of sizing with ASA over AKD is the sheet is actually a lot less slippery. Now both ASA and AKD are very, very reactive chemicals. You can buy in AKD and that's already pre-stabilised in the drum and it stays there with its stabiliser and is useful until you use it. As I say, you put it in the wet end and within 15 minutes it's all gone. It's either reacted with the cellulose or it's reacted with the water. ASA is even more reactive. In fact, it's so reactive, the manufacturers cannot make it and drum it and sell it to you. You've actually got to make it on site and use it immediately. It's so unstable, but really effective. Okay, so that's all I want to say about uh, sizing chemicals. I really hope you found that interesting. I always find sizing uh, an interesting topic. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please feel free to make any comments or observations, ask any questions, and I look forward to seeing you in another Paper Classroom video. Goodbye for now.